Oh, she's a beast. Good morning. If you've not already, please subscribe. Santa's brought Gate Lady some new wellies. Lucky girl. I could get used to this. She fell for it. <laughs> Voila! Could have put a wee bit more down actually. Coos are absolutely lathered in straw every time you do it. But they don't seem to mind. Gate lady is also covered in straw. Go on lad. <whistles> Thanks now. Here. Come on. That's what we've got now to deal with. Geese. Flipping geese. Going to go and scare them off the field, onto the neighbour's fields, and then they'll scare them off later back to our fields. Tori's getting abandoned, it's just throwing up dirt. Oh, they're off. Keep going, don't land on the next field, come on, keep moving. That's our field next door there as well, so I want them to keep moving beyond that. Right, they're away onto the neighbour's fields. This mix of feed ended up being fractionally too heavy on the pellets here and when it gets too heavy they just push them aside they eat some of them but they do fish out a few and leave them to the side and get straight at the barley because that's what they like we just need to be wary when we're mixing our mix just avoid getting this too high and um, so we usually do a ton of this to six ton of barley so we used to do five ton of barley to one ton of rapeseed pellets which are 38 36 38 percent protein these are so what's that, like 6 or 7% protein if you dilute it by 5 times? We changed that because they were starting to push the pellets aside and just go for the barley. So we dropped it to 6 tonne of barley to 1 tonne of rapeseed pellets. So it went from 6% to 5% protein source from them. And that seemed to be a lot better. They never left any. But the last mix we did took a wee bit of feed off, which is for the cows, which doesn't have the protein in it. And we took too much off. This old girl just got going this morning. Just... Give it a wee shake, level it off. Got a nice space in here. Right, that feed is full. The other side, you can't really get in with a forklift that well, so we just we bucket it out with our wheelbarrow. If you've been watching for a while now, you'll have seen us make that feeder maybe eight, nine, ten months ago. It's done the job. It's not falling to pieces, which I'm surprised because I welded it. Um, no legs have fallen off, there's no holes in it, the cattle haven't knocked over. Great success if you ask me. Just leaving that to run for a wee bit to let the battery charge up a bit, so that tomorrow morning it starts. Bit less farming happening today. This sign can come down. We're off on a non-farming event now, which involves um, some tartan, some pipes, gate ladies coming as well, and um, two people are getting duked in water. See you back on the farm. Hey boy, sit. Oh, poor. Good lad. I'm in a wee bit of a rush this morning to get elsewhere, so I went to get the bed fired up, but it wasn't playing ball, so I frustratingly gave up and I'm back to bed in my hand. Spent half an hour messing about with deep plugs and fuses and got nowhere and got frustrated and abandoned it. I don't mind rolling out bales, especially when there's only 40 odd cows to deal with. It doesn't take long at all. Gate ladies on the forklift. Wish me luck. Here comes a bell. Steady does it. Perfect. Which way is it rolling that way? You can tell which way it's rolling. If you stroke in that direction, it's smooth. That means it wants to go that way. You want to roll it that way. If you stroke in that direction, it's rough. It goes against the grain. And you know it doesn't roll that way. But this way, if you unroll it, it all comes off. 
downside to rolling out bales is you're leaving a mat and it doesn't really utilize all the straw that well. Yes, the cows ruffle it up a bit and spread it out, but you never get it as spread as you do with the telehawk. You save between, I think about 30 and 40% of the bales with a bedder than you do rolling them out. I've actually put a new cable on Crawford that goes straight to batteries. That's all good. Okay, cheers. Good morning. It is pretty frosty. On the way to visit a cattle farm and to have a look around some sheds and hopefully get some ideas. Cheers to Dave who is giving us a show round. I'll see if he doesn't mind me filming. Just stopped at Dave's farm who he's built this shed. He's built it in three sections so far. Um, started in 2019, which has left him with this, which he is calving 100 cows, so it's a very similar number to what I'm trying to get to. He is autumn and spring calving, so he's doing 60 in the spring, 40 in the autumn, of which he's just finished, just done the last one yesterday, midday, so he's getting a better sleep now. So everything is fed on the outside. There's a couple of bits that, that banking at the back there is raised up so you can get right in with a forklift. Put bales over the top there for bedding, which I quite like that concept because we're going to have to dig away a bit of a banking at ours. Um, so it might give us a chance to do similar to that. He's not finished. He's still got things to do like that backside. He's going to sheet some of it and he's going to put um, the kind of perforated roller sheets on other bits so he can bed. He's got these yokes in the front here, which um, doesn't actually use for holding cattle, it's more just to stop calves coming out. In 2017, I think, the first four bale, bays in the middle here he built. He then, in 2019, built these last three bays on the end. And then, in 2020, he built the three bays at that end, which are a lot more raised than they're actually for grain. So we've got cattle on the left here. He's got two kind of lots of cattle on the right here and a handling system down through the middle. We'll sneak in here and have a look. So this is his handling in here. He's got a crush down there with a race running up leading to it and all his cattle that are going to it can run down here. Got two handling pens which he uses for calving pens as well. He's got a Bateman crushing system around here which he's a big fan of, Welsh company. There's nothing he doesn't like about that Bateman system so we'll have a look into the Bateman crush and handling systems as well. So two handling pens pre the race which ideal for short neck cattle before they go through the rush and he can the rush into the crush as well as he can peel them off if there's something in there say he's got a wild cow that's calving or something he can bring half a dozen in here and then he can peel off a few so he doesn't need to just bring singles or he can he can fiddle about basically move calves move cows and get the right animals in the right places also gives him extra pens like just now that's the last calf that was born just yesterday this one was trying to soak other cows so chucked in this pen Leave it be, sucks that cow, no bother. And then in about his crush, he's got benches, he's got his fridge for his medicine, he's got his burner for dehorning, he's got everything here. This whole shed, um, he basically doesn't need to take any cattle out of the shed to get them to the crush. He's got a scrape passage in here, which he can set ev all the cattle back from, and then whatever he needs to run, he runs along the, the scrape passage, into the pen there, down and up the race and into the crush. Ideal. It is a cracking shed, looks the part. When he was designing the shed, he's always looked forward and thinking about where he's gonna go next. Um, so he can, if he wants to put more in here, he could put a silage bit in here. When we originally were planning our shed, we thought, oh, there's perfect. And then I did think about what if we, in the future, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever, to want another shed, where we had put it didn't suit that. So we've moved where we're gonna put it. Just like here, he's kind of thought, he doesn't have immediate plans to do anything right now, but if he does, he's made, um, he set it up that he can do that. Anyway, it's a very interest, interesting setup. We've never been fully sold on scrape passages, or I've never been like, oh, I want a scrape passage, but the more and more I come to places like this and sheds like this, where they've got a scrape passage and how they operate it, I'm more thinking that way. This was the last segment they built from those sheets there this way. His original plans were to put a passage in here and that to be pens if he moved forward in the future for more, but he scrapped that plan. He uses this as a bit of a straw store now, machinery store over there. He's got his dryer right in the corner there, which he brings out and he might, he might permanently put it in here. He's gonna sheet this. He's still got a few things to do, but 
it's interesting to see. It's a good high shed this for putting in straw. You can see he's got plenty of bales up there. It is a cracking setup in here. He's got his cavern cameras. There's one up there and there's one another one here. So keep an eye on everything from the house. There's a shiny fence in the corner. Anyway, there's another shed to have a look at. We're maybe going to stop in another place on the way home. We're just making some phone calls at the moment. But Dave watches the videos, so he offered us to come and have a, a look at this so we can film it. I don't know about the next place because it's not through the videos, so I don't want to assume I can film it. But anyway, thank you very much, Dave, for giving us a spin about and showing us your coos. And hopefully by next winter we'll put up a shed and take in a few ideas from here and a few ideas from other places and ended up with a good setup for us. Farm number two. First off, we've got a big stonker of a shed here. Okay, so these guys came out of cows um, about three years ago, and this is a fully fattening cattle store. And um, they're just in the process of putting new sockets in to put new gates up and segregate it a bit more. It is a cracker of a length, 360 foot long. They can split it right now into six bays, and they can fit. Did they say 600 cattle in here? 400? I can't quite remember. Very simple setup. They're just putting bales along the outside to feed. They've got feed bunkers that they fill up with. Uh, Bruised barley. Here's one of the bunkers here. There you go. Bruised treated barley. There's there's a protein source in there, pellets of some kind. I'm not sure exactly which ones, but they're all fattening cattle here. So something like this for fattening cattle is ideal for cows. It doesn't quite work. You just for cows you'd need more kind of segregations, more pens. Um, but it's a very simple setup which works. Simple. I like simple. He said it takes 15 minutes, 20 minutes to feed the lot done with four or six hundred fattening cattle 50 minutes to feed them Pfft, happy days all rolling out bales no better you'd think this be a cracking stretch to get a better up and down here Pew, all the way in they make quite a lot of bales uh, for the equine industry and any left over from the year before these cattle jump on but there we are another big belter of a shed to look at um, it's been up 10 years locally built too many ideas going there's too many nice things to see that's a corker 360 foot farm tour complete beers collected happy new year another pooch this one chases white things sit nice good dog good pooch that's a good piece of kit we tow bar in front of a Kubota for shifting the boats about have a guess where I am New gig today. Oh, got it. Right, one. <laughs>